Our next example looks extremely similar to the last one. We've just changed the bounds a little bit, but we have some stuff with radical i's and some stuff with n's. So let's get right into it. This is t of n is the runtime. Just as we've seen in the past, we can write it as two summations. That's t of n is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n squared minus 1. And then thus j for loop written as j equals 1 to n minus radical i of c. Because, again, this thing inside is basic arithmetic assignment, all of those things. Notice I've ignored the floor function. I told you we were allowed to do this. We're going to follow our own advice here. We're just going to ignore it. There may be cases where it's relevant. We will not really focus them in focus on them in this class. So t of n is equal to that thing inside of the summation c is a fixed quantity that has nothing to do with j, so we can take the sum and and multiply by the number of terms. In this case, the number of terms is n minus radical i. And now we must deal with the summation. Just as we saw in the past, the best way to deal with this is going to be to bound. We could try to distribute the summation, which might help us out. But just to make our lives a little bit easier, we're going to just immediately start bounding. I'll comment on why as we go through. So we're going to bound above and bound below. So bound above. To bound this above, we again start by writing down the summation as given. Oops, sorry, it starts at 0 to n squared minus 1 of c times n minus radical i. The reason this example is different than our last one is, one, it is that we're going to ignore the floor function, and two, this is a decreasing summation. For decreasing summations to bound them above, we replace each term with the biggest. But the biggest term occurs at the bottom bound of the summation. It's decreasing, so smaller values of i will make it bigger. So this is less than or equal to. The value of i I'm going to plug in is going to be the bottom bound, which is 0. So this is c, then n minus 0. Radical zero, which is zero. And now we have a nice summation. There's no more i inside of the summation. So we have a fixed quantity that we are adding up a fixed number of times. So this is equal to the top bound minus the bottom bound plus one times the inside, which is just cn. Everything cancels out in a really nice way here. And I have n squared times cn. That's really convenient. This is equal to cn cubed. Hopefully that's not so bad. The only thing to be careful of is that it is decreasing, so make sure you plug in the correct value for i. Now, let's try to bound it below. To bound this below, we're going to do the same thing we've done every other time, which is we're going to take the summation and split it in half. So t of n, which we can copy-paste from above and recolor in our correct color, is equal to split the summation in half, and this is the sum from i equals 0 to n squared divided by 2 of c n minus radical i plus the sum from i equals n squared divided by 2 plus 1 to n squared of c and then n squared minus radical i. Sorry, n minus radical i. Let's fix that. Now, we need to re remove one of these summations. We always remove the smaller of the two and keep the larger summation. So to bound this below, I'm going to drop the second summation because this is a decreasing sum, meaning the smaller values of i are the bigger values. So I'm going to keep the first summation. So we have the sum from i equals 0 to n squared divided by 2 of c n minus radical i. And then we plug in a value of i. Here we're going to plug in the top bound. Because it's decreasing, a larger value of i makes it smaller. So to make it as small as possible within that range of values, we replace i with n squared over 2, the largest value. And now we've removed i from the problem. Therefore, we now have a fixed quantity that we are adding up a fixed number of times. So this is equal to the top bound minus the bottom bound plus 1. Minus 0 doesn't affect us, so we just have n squared over 2 plus 1. And then we have, as a sum and, c, then n minus radical n squared over 2 is n over radical 2. And we have a bit of a nightmare again here for combining constants, so we need to be a bit careful. This is greater than or equal to, I can drop positive terms, so I'm going to drop the positive 1 and bound below, n squared over 2, times, I'm going to factor out an n, and we have cn times 1 minus 1 over radical 2, 
I don't really give a crap what that number is. It's a number. So I have a bunch of numbers times n squared times n. This is equal to c over 2 times 1 minus 1 over radical 2. Again, some messy number like we saw before, times n cubed. So we are bounded above by n cubed and bounded below by some other different number times n cubed. So the final thing must be in theta of n cubed. So since t of n is in big O of n cubed and t of n is in big omega of n cubed, we know t of n must be in theta of n cubed. So this problem showed us how to deal with decreasing summations, again, which we've seen already in our previous videos on summations, and it showed us how to ignore the floor function. In the future, we are just going to strictly ignore that going forward.